Well, it's always nice to know you're still there with us here on AM120. Let's move on with the program now. And once again, happy Independence Anniversary. Well, it's a beautiful day in the history of the nation. Every 1st of October marks that landmark event where you cast your mind back and you remember what the heroes fought for. You remember uh, how far that journey has been. Of course, you also want to recall where we had been prior to independence and uh, how very either tortuous or, well, if you like, happy a journey it has been uh, ever since that point in time. Well, there's a lot to talk about, so let's just get straight to it. Our first guest, uh, well, we have a series of them, but then uh, <laughs> let me start to introduce them one after the other. Uh, well, Chief uh, Ayo, Adoko. I beg your pardon. I've never been the chief of anybody. I'm an ordinary Ayo, Adoko. All right, sir. sir. Well, I beg your pardon, too. When did you get to see the chief? I've never been I've never been one. Okay. I've never accepted any chief from anybody. Well, all right, so I hope I beg your pardon. It is a lawyer, a Yoruba nationalist. I'm um, we call a, 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 a reporter like you. Yes, sir. That's my first training. Okay, sir. He well, a champion of the cause of Yoruba for years, a convener oh. and an initiator of NADECO, which is a pro democracy group formed after June twelfth. Uh, of course, a chieftain of Afeni Ferry amongst many parts of his uh, very robust profile. It's very nice to have you here. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you as uh, thankful for another, another event. Yes, indeed. Well, we also have Professor Dini Olatsubosu, who is the Dean of the Faculty of Law at uh, University of Ibadan. Thank you so much for coming. Good morning. Thank you very much. Thank All you. right. And of course, we have General, that's retired General Alabi Isama who led Nigerian troops during the Civil War. He is a war veteran and, of course, a military administrator, amongst other parts of his also very robust profile. Very, very nice to have you here. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Happy independence to all Nigerians. Yes, indeed. Well, and you a too. Thank to you, sir. Elder uh, statesmen, That's that right. is, you know, distinguished Nigerians in our midst. Thank Today, you. it was, come talk to us, you know, mm. Nigeria at 58. Well, we are much, you know, we are your children. So <laughs> the pre the pre independence era we may not have witnessed it, you know, but you you witnessed it, you know. Tell us, how was it like how was Nigeria like before, you know, independence as it were? Well, October well, first. Let's start, you know, uh, yeah, from I that. I think now. Uh, age before <laughs> from that your father. Well, um I must uh, say in honesty, that uh, on that date, when we secured this so-called political independence, we have it, we thought it was a promising day that Nigeria was scheduled to be a great country. As people in primary school, we we, we were treated with a lot of uh, the beautiful um, memorabilia, food was even served. We were given dependence cups, spoons, and knives and the likes. We paraded, we saluted the king, the queen, and the, and the likes. And um, we thought it was going to be a great country. And that was our, our impression. Uh, at that time, and it was the, it was just immediately, we have been uh, governed mm -hmm. by some of our leaders, particularly from 1951 when the Mafasin constitution started to operate, self-government, we had the luck in this part of the country to have been governed under the leadership of Chief of Bafemi Awolo. Mm -hmm. So, quite a number of things were being set down. Huh? Uh, before that, do you remember that um, the first set of things happened to this part of the country, and it influenced the other regions also. The first set, uh, television station had been established here. In many parts of Europe, there were, were none. The answer of the State Assembly 
if you are to match it with any of the Western democracies and the parliament, we have it on record. We were not, we were of equal standard, if not higher standard than many Western parliaments. So we were very eager. Some of us, as young as we were, we are proud of, our, of, of, of the environment where we are in and of our nationality. Uh, so I, I, I may be a different person mm. amongst the colleagues who have assembled me with distinguished gentlemen, the, the, the professor and the retired general. Uh, but that's the way I look at Nigeria. It was promising at the beginning. Mm. But uh, let's, let's, let's keep it at that. All right. We'll, we'll leave it there for now. All right, uh, Professor, let's hear from you. Where do your thoughts take you, Nigeria at 58? Thank you very much. I, I think Nigeria at 58 is a country of misfits uh, because uh, so many things have happened in the country in the last 58 years. And like um, uh, the last speaker said, I said, you, you discover that the, if you look at the development of Nigeria as a nation, it started with a very high hope uh, status. Um, the first set of uh, politicians and the rulers at that time were people of integrity in their various respects, irrespective of their parties, affiliations. They had issues and principles that they were engrossing and were able to convince the majority of the people. But along the line, there were some incursions into the polity of Nigeria, and then the first military coup came in uh, with the setbacks. Uh, and, and thereafter, uh, there were agitations and counter-agitations. But by and large, we were back into democracy, which we are practicing in the last time, uh, from 1999 to, to date, about 19 years now. So, well, it, it, it's a country that um, there isn't really much to celebrate again. I remember uh, in some years past, uh, people look forward to October 1. Students in primary and secondary schools are always going to the various stadia to celebrate or march, you know, to show that the country is one country, a promising nation. But so many events have occurred which have derailed the trend of progress in this country. And I believe um, there's a need for the majority of Nigerians to have a rethink on the way and manner we want this country to go. Because the pathway so far is discouraging, it's frustrating. Uh, there is poverty in the land, oppressions are bound, the political uh, atmosphere is uh, confusing and demoralizing. So there isn't really much to see except because of the number of days or number of years that we, have, we are counting now. 58 years shows that um, we're supposed to have arrived at a stage of maturity. But in terms of that in development, Nigeria has not really developed to that stage. Well, thank you very much. Uh, retired General. Now, let, let's hear from you, your reflection of what you uh, can remember of the past prior to independence, perhaps with excitement or nostalgia now, those things that you can remember. Will you say the British now, before they left, they set the foundation and they gave us the button for a progressive Nigeria? Ah, thank you very much and uh, Happy New Year to all Nigerians. In fact, the fact that it rained this morning is giving me hope that uh, it's will be better. Just before independence, everything went well, except the fact that the colonialists were looking for who to hand over Nigeria to. On the military side, the eastern region then had 37 officers. The northern region that won the election after that had only eight officers. The West did a little better, had 10 officers. Now, when the North won the election... Sir, you mean high-ranking officers? Yes. All right. Officers from second lieutenant to... Uh, left hand corner. Okay. So, but when the NPC, there were three political parties, the main political parties, 
the Northern People's Congress called the NPC. Then in the West, you had Action Group led by Awolowo. In the East, you had the NCNC led by Namdi, Dr. Namdi Azikiwe. And that of the North, the Northern People's Congress led by Sir Madu Bello. Now, the North won the election in a coalition government with NCNC of the East, the West was not part of it. And uh, with only eight officers, they were not happy with that. Because almost immediately after that, there was a coup in, in uh, Togo. Togo had only 120 uh, soldiers. And they had a coup, and they were dragging their president, Olympio, on the floor. And these people thought, well, this can happen to us. We have only eight officers. So they started this mass production of officers. There are senior, many retired today, and many of them have even been a head of state of the country. By 1960, at independence, I was 20 years old. I was at school in England. We were watching television in the morning. And the British officer came and shouted, hey, everybody, it's, it's late. You're late on parade. Why are you watching television in the morning? You have television in your country? I was not the only one. The Ghanaians, Liberians, other countries in Africa were in the same place. And I said, yes, sir, we have television in my country. The others just kept quiet because they had no television in their country, not even in South Africa that gave you DSTV today. I was very proud, and I proudly said, yes, sir. They said, all right, you've had enough. Let's go on, on parade. Nigeria was nice. Everything went well until the military bastardized this country. I was part of them. I was part of them. I was in the army. So, things that went wrong started from the military incursion into politics. It's because they were young, useful exuberance, they will say, and they wanted a better Nigeria. And that, you see, again, the military that bastardized Nigeria, it was not necessary, that coup was not necessary, because majority of the officers that organized the coup were from the east. The coalition was north and the east. The west was no part of it. They wanted to stifle the west, but they couldn't do that. Why? Because in the north, you had tin ore, the money we use in building Nigeria, the port, the roads, the railway. In the east, you had coal, which we used to run the railway. The west had nothing. Now, but you had national resources, they also have. Uh, in the east, they had the palm oil and all the rest. In the north, they had granite and um, mm. uh, cotton. In the west, you had cocoa. But the west was very resourceful. And that made the west better than all of them, and okay. they were jealous of the west. And so till today, they are trying to bring the west down. All right, let's take from you. Very soon. Okay, well, um, let's let's Mr. Okonoko, sir. Um, Nigeria is 58 years in terms of independence, 19 in terms of the democratic sojourn that we embarked on. Um, should we or are we, would you say, with a country of this population, almost 190 million people, are we expecting too much in 58 years and 19 of democracy, politically speaking? Well, uh, thank you very much. I am sorry to say once again that because the 
greatest majority of the age group in Nigeria, almost 65% of them are between the age of 18 and 40. You've never seen any good governance in your life. All that you have known and you continue to know is the military uh, uh, with immediate effect. I'm happy to commend General Labi Sama for being honest and factual with the state of our country. The army on January 15, 1966 arrested Nigerian growth and have kept it down till then to date. Should stop the charade of the fanciful thinking about democracy. What you have, what you call democracy today is in courts. It's a suspect democracy that is guarded still by the Nigerian army, directly and indirectly. And because each time they were forced to go back to the barracks, they have gone on their own terms. And so they've gone with their loot, with their pillage, and so they are still in effective control of both the economy and the political system. You never find a situation when they come with their funny, very dishonest claim that is because the, the civilians have got it wrong, they've run it down, that's why they have they've taken coup. I wonder, have you ever asked a competitor to go and operate an armor core? I'm a car. I feel ask a tailor to go and be a soldier. How many errors, fundamental errors, are the Nigerian army made, and yet nobody had asked them to come and account? I give you a typical example. He knows it. It was tactically imprudent, professionally very, very destructive for General Murtala Mohammed. To have decided to cross with the Nigerian troops at Tunisia Bridge, and that cost a lot, a thousand troops to die, unfortunately. But they have overrun Nigerian nation. And no, except for those of us who have laid down our lives for restoration of democracy, which they have again bastardized because the army men. After the terrible confrontation campaign vigorously mounted by men and women of best caliber that assembled under the platform called Nigeria, when the, the government was going to be formed, the army again decided to force one of their own leaders in the name of General Basinjo on us. And see what has happened again to, to this street. So but, it's a, it's a, it is a, it is a caged. Sir, uh, sir. Uh, currently, as we speak, uh, you, you are talking about you are talking about nineteen you are talking about nineteen years of. That's why I'm okay. I'm giving you the background. You don't have you have not had any so called nineteen years of democracy. What you have had is a compromised military uh, 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 arranged event that is happening, and that's why. The first pres president is a general. In that, when he was in power for eight years, he changed the, the, chairman, the chairman of, the, of, of his party almost five times. Two or three of them were retired the generals. Eh? Uh, but the judge, eh? uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the man who was his commissioner for education, eh? Ali, mm -hmm. and, and the likes, Ahmad Wali. And when each time he felt, and he brought in the, the, this character again, uh, the Mr. Fixes, uh, the Tony Anene, the eh? chairman board of trustees. So, look, we've not had politics, democracy in its true sense. <laughs> democracy is supposed to be about people, people's will. These people's will uh, do not have any reckoning in Nigeria today. That's why. You can see what is happening. That the, those who govern us, they take us for a ride and they get away with murder. 
because of too much okay. of the, uh, what, what, the guy, what I regard as a, uh, 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 we are ready to compromise with you. Young people are not ready to take their destiny into their hands, and you want the best for you. Let's jump to General Isamba for a response to that. Uh, well, the military responsible for where we are today, currently we have a former military man as the president of Nigeria. Does that emphasize the point? No. When, when I use the word bastardized in this case was that Nigeria was incompetently ruled by the military. And they had no reason to be there in the first place. No but reason. having been there, what they did wrong was their own style of governance, which is different from what you call democracy. They want to rule everybody. And a lot of civilians make this mistake that the military is not democratic. It's not true. We are divided into sections, from section to platoon, and platoon or, uh, to uh, company, company to uh, battalion, battalion to brigades. Okay. We, uh, the, the army will not debate how to do things, oh. but they will give you the opportunity, they will give you the opportunity to think about how you will do your own part if I want you to go to Lagos. And I say, Ijebu is your own side, and Yewa is your own side. We'll give you the opportunity to discuss with the commander how you will do it. But the overall ball game is on my desk. I will finally put the instruction there. The army ruled the country that way. People liked it. It now. It was too late before we realized it did not work. So, well, when you say people liked it, uh, yes, uh, generally they so. celebrated, <laughs> they partied, <laughs> they voted. Maybe those closest <laughs> to now, whatever it was, <laughs> whatever it was, the people did. The reaction of the people to governance. In fact, many people still preferred it. Because today, the member of the, many of the members of your National Assembly, I don't know how many of them, or percentage of them, are over 58. And they still prefer the army constitution handed over to them. The army gave the present constitution, and they love it, and they don't want to change it. And so... Who do you want to blame but now? Because, but that's because of some, you know, consideration. Now let's go to uh, Professor Latuposo. Well, uh, General Isama made mention of some certain things, and that also uh, pointed out some things. You know, military to regnum and all of that. Let's focus on the unity of the country now. General Isama mentioned that you know, prior to independence, even when we got to the past, this ethnic rivalry was there. Suspicion was there as to whom the you know, colonial master should give hand over power to and all of that. And right now, till now, we're still preaching you know, unity as if we've not really taken that identity as being a Nigerian, but, uh, uh, aside talking about our ethnic group or first of all, or the region we come from. Is it that the military caused this for us or the problem had been there uh, prior, to, prior to independence? And that's what we're still confronting now. Thank you very much. I think much has been said by almost everybody here. But I don't want to really blame the military so much. Uh, because um, whatever comes out of a society is the combination of what that society is all about. So the military were part of the Nigerian society. And the circumstances at that time probably compelled them to do what they did. Uh, because that become an historical uh, event now, we cannot undo what has been done. So I think the only way out is from now to look forward to what from the past to the present and to the future. Because I was just looking at it when we came here and I said that, well, this is 58th anniversary of uh, Nigeria as a nation, as an independent nation. If you look at it mathematically, it's almost mm -hmm. equally. The democracy we've had is about 29 years now. Uh, the military ruled also for about 29 years. So that's the break-even. So we have 
almost because if you look at 1960 to 1965, that was five years. 66 when the coup took place, that's six years. 79 to 83, four years, you know, and then that's 10. Then 19 years now, that's 29. So it means that the military have ruled for 29 years. The um, the civilians who have ruled for 29 years. So now, even though there were some e-cops along the line, if we allow the democracy to go on. It will come to a time when the number of years that the Ministry of Rule will not be reducing, declining, and that of democracy will be moving higher. Okay. Uh, so but, uh, go on. Sorry. I'm sorry. So there is a possibility for people to, you know, to forget because, you know, you talk about population, you talk about age group, mm -hmm. age bracket. Those who witness the e days of the ministry as evolution will come in and natural things, they will be easy enough. And then there will be less emphasis on the military. Because what you look at Nigeria as a nation, if you look at the history we've been talking about in, in, in pre colonial time, uh, when the three leaders were talking, Aulawo, Azikwe, and uh, Sadama. Sadama, yes. uh, they said, okay, uh, I will, um, Azikwe said, let us forget about the differences we have. And then um, the Sadama said, let us understand. We have to understand the differences between us. And then Aulaw said, let us tolerate. You see, so the three perspectives from which they have looked at it are different. When you say let us forget, you can't forget something that is re reality. Then when you talk about understanding, understanding is more or less of the fact that you need to give regard to the other person's difference, to your own. And then when you say tolerate means that you need to bear it. So if you look at it, there are so many things that divide us as a nation. And that's why I will always say Nigeria is just a geographical expression. It's not a nation. Because there is no homogeneity in culture, no homogeneity in religion, no homogeneity in background values, norms, understanding. So all we need to do is that we need to really see Nigeria as a, a, a child of necessity. And having come together so far for 58 years, the question is, can we continue as a nation? Okay. The, Professor Lazo, uh, I will come straight to you then. I just wanted to touch on something General Isama spoke about. The constitution that we currently use. He spoke about how it was handed to us by the military and that people accepted it. They still want it. You're the arbiter here. I mean, you're a professor of law. What would you say about that? Well, with due respect to uh, <laughs> General, uh, uh, when the constitution was brought in by Abdul Salami Abubaka regime, uh, but it was Nikki Tobi who was the chairman of the Constitution and Drafting Committee. But because of the expediency of time, you know, like uh, the general said, if you look at the history of Nigeria, uh, there was a time that when military took over, people were celebrating. But after the time of uh, when uh, General Badamazi Babangida came in, and uh, we saw all forms of manipulations and all forms of uh, maradonic uh, display, Nigeria now realized that then the, the, the future of Nigeria does not lie in the military again. So they were now trying to, you know, be opposed to military kind of tendency of coming in. And that was why there was no time for Abu Bakr to say, let us go into constitutional conference again, because they would think he was also trying to buy time. So within a shorter period of time he had, he just assembled some people, and they just looked at the 1979 constitution and brought in something, because the 1979 constitution was also brought in by General Basanjo. Uh, uh, regime and he also injected certain things into it which was outside the scope of what the 49 wise men brought about so but if you look at the history of the even in, in america you see that some of their leaders before were as generous so we cannot rule it out but as time goes on we will get a better way but like general said it is difficult for us now to amend the constitution wow. and i've said this every year wow. the national assembly which is saddled with the responsibility of doing it will never subscribe to that because so much powers have been given to them, they are so much enriching themselves in that constitution. So it will be difficult. For instance, if you say, we have said this before, why can't we make it a part-time, those in the National Assembly? Do you think all these people will subscribe to it when somebody is earning about 28 million naira a month as a salary, and then they say they cannot pay uh, 56,000 naira for a minimum wage? So those are issues. So I think a time will come when Nigerians will decide for themselves, how do we want to be ruled? And then that is when South you have something to tell us. I, 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 at this juncture, let me mix this 
certain categorical imperatives clear to viewers. By the grace of God, my book is ready. The Nadeko story is ready. But November 2nd last year, at the Department of Political Science, University of Lagos, I was invited as a guest lecturer to come and do an assessment, examination of 50 years of military intervention in Nigerian politics. The following were clear statements that I made, and I'm emphasizing them, and it's in, it's in my book, The Nadeko Story. Nigeria was not the creation of Nigerian people. So let's get that one into, that, that into, into our head. Clearly, Nigeria was not the creation of the Nigerian people. It was created by the colonial masters for their own economic and political gains against us. Ethn the ethnic nationalities in Nigeria who have been living thousands and thousands of, of years ago, only their properties, only their trees, their waters, their cultures, their tradition, their artifacts, their moss, and the likes. A foreign invader came, having superior power, and forced us into cohabitation. Nigerians have not been given the privilege of the taking a decision. Voluntary one, do we want to stay together as a people in a place they've called Nigeria? No, the ethnic nationalities have not been given that privilege. All the so-called choreographed conferences that they had, the, the journey to La Casta House, all were choreographed to achieve a pernicious end for the advantage of the British colonial masters. So Nigeria was not a creation of the Nigerian people. Sorry, That's one. Sorry, sorry, no, sorry. That's, Nigeria is not the only country with multiple ethnic groups. That That's not, exactly. Look, you, 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 will, you, will, you will not be, be fair to our senses. Instead of some of us, America that you copy today is not going to sound like Nigeria. The indigenous people have, have even been wiped out completely. Few of them remaining. This is a place where you had these ethnic nationalities entrenched in their territories before. And when a, a superpower came to force you into competition, and when, when they were leaving, they handed over this power of authority to the weakest link in the chain of our command. <laughs> and those ones have been taking us as they wanted. They've used force of arms to acquire what does not belong to them. And if they've used the force of arms to keep them till to tomorrow. That's the basic thing. First of all, please, uh, okay. you, you wanted an explanation. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the professor has, has, has spoken about after uh, 29 years, mm -hmm. uh, civilian, 29 years of, you know, okay, calculation. But does it really make, make, make us, help? is it helpful to us? Look, if there was no military coup in, on January 15, 1996, which are turned out to be tribally exposed. If if Ajuna are taken away opera, uh, uh, opera, if you are taking Dennis Osadebe away from the mid, from the Midwest, the other group of Nigerians couldn't have thought that this was a tribal organized coup to eliminate the other people in Nigeria. Akitola was taken away from here. Then the man who took over power. General Julius Agun Yurosi did that and made a mess of it because the coterie of advisors that he had with him were led principally by Ozumba Umbadiwe and, and Omwa Vorizu. So he, the, the advice he was securing did not help him matter. So he did not do what he needed to do with those who carried out that coup. Then it led to a revenge coup. The revenge coup now provided an opportunity. Eh, for the Northerners we are talking about, to be able to get other people along with them to fight an unnecessary war, ego trip. And at, it was at the end of that war that the Northern Army took over Nigeria. Look at the book written by General uh, Chris Garba. General Chris Garba, the former Chief of Army Staff, wrote a book called Federal Republic of Nigeria Army. That's the title. To let you know what has, what has happened to us. So, therefore, 
it is not going to be helpful for us to play the ostrich. We have not taken a decision to right the wrong for us to be able to move forward. I've never seen a country like this where we live the opposite life. We import what we have, we export what we don't have. I've never seen a country like, like, like our own. We export what we don't have, we say we go and help them sort that democracy, eh? which you don't have here. Then the oil that you have, almost three quarter or two to, more than two third of, of the oil consumption that we use in Nigeria, the policy we have is to import them. And then it is the Nigerian people eh? who have to suffer, eh? who have to go through the human treatment. Because if we won't pay for that demo rage, we are, we are forced to pay for the vagaries of international world market. Whatever the oil says now there, that's what you and I have to pay for it. Because those who govern us don't pay for these things. They are, they are in government. Okay. Yeah? There's so many things for, for, for you guys to know as to what has happened to us. And until you are ready to take your destiny into your hands, if you are looking for anybody to come and do it for you, we have put our lives on the, on, online. Several times we have been detained. We have gone through jail. 24 calendar that month fought by my bachelor. I, I was in the Koyi prison when he died. And we are here now. The kind of government we thought we were going to have will be the one that will serve the Nigerian people. Are these ones serving Nigerian people? Well, uh, uh, sir, okay. we, we now know the problems that we are trying to offer so yes. solutions. The Professor Olatumboso. Uh, he made mention of you know military interregnum, especially uh, the officers from a particular region of the country having their way for a very long time. But some will still tell that when you talk about poverty, abject poverty, he is still domiciled in that part of the country more. And that how are we going to forget the past and build Nigeria of the now? Poverty is no is not, doesn't discriminate; it costs across. So should we really be reflecting on? Uh, the group that ruled for a long time, or the peculiar problems that we have now that cost across? Well, thank you very much. Uh, much has been said, like I said the other time. I think um, the next thing is the way forward, uh, because it is practically impossible, again, for Nigeria to begin to say, well, let's come and decide whether we want to live together again. Because, the, like um, Sao Paulo has said, because uh, he is an activist, so he can think in that perspective to see that that should be the ideal thing. For Nigeria, is a, is a configuration of so many elements and so many issues involved in it. So those who will do it, those who are going to steer that, are those who are not ready to let go the Nigerian nation because they are the ones enjoying it. And, um, and I think, the, thank God we have a, a retired general here who also know about um, what you call revolution and all these stuff. So it's not easy to witness war. And that is why, you see, United Nations have always been championing that whatever it is, democracy, even if it is not properly executed, is better than resorting to war. Because at the end of the day, a lot of humanity will be wasted when you go through the war. And it will not bring out the best solution. So I think the one we need to do now is that we should begin to draw consciousness to our electorate. I think the Nigerian electorates are gullible, they are docile. They base their action when it comes to the time of election on the trivialities. They are not actually having convinced position. Because in some other crimes, when you say you want to contest for a particular position, people charge you, people ask, what have you done in the past? What are the things you want to bring to us? But now we don't discuss policies or principles. We discuss policies of personalities. This person is this, this person is that. So that is where the problem is. Unfortunately, in the First Republic, when we had so much number of not too literate people, they were even more conscious. The electorate were more even conscious than the kind of the electorate we have now. And so what others have said is the bulk of the electorate are the youths. And that's my fear. The youths from 18 to 45 or 40, they are the ones dominating the political in terms of the number. But many of them are shallow in their understanding of what it is to take political decisions. Monday. And that is why there is a need for us to draw the consciousness to enlighten our people that when you take money for the purpose, money that cannot even serve you anything, you are mortgaging your future. So there is a need for the, for the activists and uh, 
other people to ensure that we need to inform our electorate. Look at what happened in Oshun of recent. The number of votes were regarded as void because even the politicians, when they go for campaign, all they do there is to go and uh, do social gathering. They are not even telling them if you want to vote, this is our symbol, this is how you vote, don't fold your this thing like this. They are not teaching them. And at the end of the day, number of votes were regarded as void. Okay. Well, uh, generally, Summer, we look at, uh, we continue to stare at the political terrain in the country today. And uh, I'll ask you, what would you say, taking a hind seat overview, look at the way things are being run today? Uh, poverty, money being used by politicians to woo people. Uh, would you say this is a trend that will continue, or why are we here, really? Uh, I don't think we have started addressing the issues. <laughs> My dear brother, <clears throat> as an activist, he's unhappy about the goings on in the country. You, there is no utopian government anywhere in the world where, you, where everybody is satisfied with the hymns and caprices around. If you make a straight road, they say that's why vehicles are crashing. If you bend the road, they will say, oh, because his mother's house is at the corner, that's why he bent there. What the problem is, is here in the West. Also in the West. Yes. Talk to us. We keep talking about the North. The North had fueled a system where only the elites will benefit. There is no part of Quran that I read which says you will marry an underage girl. The North is doing that, whatever. There is no part of Quran I read which says ladies, women will be important when we want the lady you come out, when we want you go to kitchen and the other room. There is no part of Quran that said that. We look for what is convenient for us. That was why I was better than the rest of them. He went on to look for what was better for his own people. Look, what stops this state here owning their own airline? What are we talking about here? What stops this state collecting the tax and give water to everybody? In Nibadon, do you all have government water? What are we talking about here? When we are talking about independence of 58 years, what stops this state applying for oil well, which the army gave to individuals? The economy of the country is in the hands of individuals. That's why you could buy new notes in the street and you can't find it in the bank. Our Lord did not care about all these things happening. He went on to lay the standard. He put the stadium there. I was the first to enter that stadium to play football against Jose College. But on both sides school won the Tamojin Cup of this western region. School sports. You had the television. Spain didn't have that. South Africa didn't have that. No other country in Africa had it. This country last year celebrated 40 years of NTA. It's a piece of nonsense. We keep deceiving ourselves. If it was 40 years of NTA, but you say WNTV is NTA. Is WNTV 40 years? But we celebrated 40 years. Let me tell you here again, and because of the people out there listening, I don't think you were born at independence, so you didn't see these things. housing estate at Bodija. Show me any other government in this, in this or your state that has put in another Bodija housing estate for workers. They all, all the members of the 
national, or, or, I mean, of their assembly. They got paid. And they couldn't pay 18,000 18, minimum wage. The problem is here. And let us face it. When I say here, in the last election, we brought in Buhari. Mm -hmm. We were told, I live abroad. We were told that Buhari was sleeping at uh, Tinubu's house. Maybe on his couch, whichever. Who called Buhari to come and be president? He had tried it three times, he didn't. And the West said, all right, we will give you our vote, we will give you the money, you will do this. What did we tell Buhari to do for the West? What did we tell Buhari to do for Nigeria that we are complaining now? He didn't tell you he was a competent person. He didn't tell you that. He wants to be president of Nigeria and he will gather people to run it. Wait a minute. Everybody is always complaining of the West, uh, of the North. They know how incompetent they are. They will know how inefficient they are. That's why they are ineffective. That, that's, that's, so. that's a strong, strong that's word. Strong I am saying so on this television. Ineffective how? That is why everybody is complaining that Nigeria is not ruled well. It's called a feudal system where we take the money from somewhere and we distribute for the, to the elites, not... The ordinary person, the early side, about 10% or 20% of Nigeria, and the rest 80% are paupers. And unless you are a pauper, why would you take a thousand from me to give me your vote? That's why they didn't let their people go to school. The richest people are in the north. They are the richest in the country. They are the richest in Africa. But the poorest are still there because they are not resourceful. What stops the West from putting the road from Oyoto, he's saying? Well, it's impossible. Sorry, sir. Let, let's go to the uh, chief. Uh, uh, sir, uh, Mr. Alfaroku. Uh, uh, he, he made mention of some of the dialogue uh, uh, during uh, the regional. I, I listen, regional. I, I listen to the general. But let me remind him of this basic fact. When we talk about that the problem is from here, perhaps you should refresh your, 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 your mind that what our forefathers laid down before the military struck huh? just by a stroke of pain devious wishful thinking of president lieutenant general Basanjo, he appropriated and nationalized all those things the national assets of our people with the use cocoa eh, money to establish the national stadium, the, the, the Liberty Stadium is no more, it's not, it's not, it's not more owned by the, by the Southwest. Perhaps for effective management? Which, well, have they managed it well? The place is in ter terrible shape. All the national assets of, of our people here that have been, that our people's resources were used to establish were nationalized by Ambassador. <coughs> you talk about the television. It wasn't in Mount Vernon. No, no that's what, but, but, but that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying to you. The problem starts that's, from here. That's what. But, but look, the thing is that when you people, when the military took over power, yeah. the first thing you did was to appropriate over two thirds of the powers and the influences that the regions normally should have to the center. You appropriated it to yourself. You followed up. The military followed up by appropriating the major means of resources of raising money. To finance your social, economic, and political activities, you are appropriated to the center so much that the center. Look at all they have had now almost about ten to twelve, no twelve, uh, uh, um, um, revenue allocation committee. And okay. all that that have happened is that, at a minimum, the national government which is not like a father Christmas, appropriates almost 60 to 62 percent to itself. The other part of the country eh, have to rest with the others. So what can the, because of the, you have failed, you rejected 
and ignored the, uh, uh, the, the fiscal revenue allocation formula that had been, been used by the way. That was what enabled Awolowo to be able to do what he did because after whatever resource was taken from a particular region, 50% of it is retained in that region. They sent 50% to the national. 30% of, of it again is put into the distributable pool, which is again allocated eh, among all the component units. But that, uh, that's not so any longer. The regions don't have that major means eh, of raising resources from which they can finance their operation. And then take this from me. There's nobody. 98% of the characters who are in politics today were former friends, former, I mean, loyalties, sympathizers, confederates, conduit pipes of the military. Well, sir, don't you, so don't because you of that, wait now, they cannot behave otherwise. They cannot offend the, those who put them in office. Look, you know what Baba Bangida did when he came? Because Buhari's said everybody was discredited and put everybody in jail. And he came, said he was writing good to write it wrong. Then they created what they called New Breed. Because of that, no same person among our own people who are in the action group, who are in the, who are in the UPN. I was assistant director of organization of that, of that, of that party. There was no, none of them who had money to be able to run an election. Because elections have been, have been commercialized and monetized. Look at the characters who are governors today in the Southwest. Who among them was not made by the military? Okay. And I've asked the question nationally oh who is a worthy man today in Nigeria? Who is, is not a military man or made by the military? Well, all right, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry for sure. Uh, sir, I still want Should to we comment. really. We can't move forward if we continue to talk about the military. The We've told you that the military bastardized the country. We all have our states that, now. That, 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 Let's move forward. But they are holding us to no, ransom. No military man okay. is holding you. You know why? You know why? Must, why no military you? man is holding go to, you. Down. Go, to, go, to, go to the National Assembly. Yes. Look at the number, the percentage of these military people, police people, and their agents in that place. You, I, I, I gave the, 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 some serious. A fundamental example to illustrate the, this peculiar, the, the peculiar nature of where we are today, where you can't have a change. Okay. We need to bring Professor Last oh, okay. into the picture here. Now, uh, the West, he has said a whole lot. We have a whole lot of things that were established and not necessarily by the military. He pointed out to Chief Awolowo during his own day. Uh, but then, uh, would you say that's still the same drive that we see? Let's take the military out of this. We've moved into a democratic rule for 19 long years. Yes. What, what, what would you say? Well, like I said, um, we, we, we have, we have uh, many have witnessed the past. Many have read about the past. Uh, and I think the word is essential now is how do we move forward? Uh, and we can only move forward through this democratic setting. Because uh, any other alternative will be counterproductive and it will also cause uh, loss of life and property, which we do not want to happen in Nigeria. Yeah, I think what is important now is that we have identified some of the problems, the ministry and all the rest, but not the ministry alone, because we also have those who are politicians who are also friends and cronies of the ministry, like some others have said. But like I said, power belongs to the people. So what we need to do now is to, to enlighten the populace. Because let me give you, I work with statistics. In Noshun, the election that was held, you have to be factual. 1.7 million people registered. About 700,000 voted. It, that means that 1 million did not participate. Majority of those who did not participate are the enlightened ones. Who are disgruntled about the system? They sit down in their homes, listening to what the analysts in channels and the television stations are saying. But that does not transform to change. That does not transform to democracy. Because democracy is usually fought on the battlefield. And the battlefield is when you go to the election. So what we need to do, the bulk of the 700,000, majority of the 700,000 who voted are those who are myopic. I'm sorry to say it. 
who are myopic in their thought and understanding. Mm. Let me give you one this scenario we need to break now. Like what he has said, just how Pado has said, is that look at the era of uh, Chifawulo, for instance, now. When he was in UPN, I witnessed what happened in 79 upward. When he was in UPN, you will never see him bringing uh, the daughter to come and become senator. Mm. But what we see now is that a governor will become a governor after that. He will bring his in-law to become a, a House of Representative for another senator. Or one leader will bring his wife to be a senator, and the one will continue to be there for another three times. And somebody who is not there, they say he's not entitled to the second time. So those are issues. Well, we are personalized so, politics. Sorry, let's go to, politics let's is not go to about changing to people. Mm. It's about those who are competent, not nepotism. What we are practicing is purely nepotism. People just look at it from the perspective of how much money do you, will this one transform to me? That is not politics. Well, General, I'm sorry, sorry before you come in. General, eh? let's quickly have your reaction. Especially, you said the problem lies within the West. In the situation where you have yeah, that, everything that's exactly almost why I need to talk to my now. brother here. You see, nepotism, yes. Jeff Kennedy in America put Robert Kennedy as Attorney General. His brother. His brother. Your competent. There's nothing wrong in me putting my son if I know he's competent. But what is wrong is that you do not have any ideology. But that you're talking national. I'm not on the national television here. This is an or your television BCOS. We are talking about we are talking about the military in national assembly. I'm talking about the, how many military in your your assembly. Why are, they, why are they not able to think for their own people, get things done? How can they do that effectively no. when everything is centralized now? Good. The resource control Good. centralized. Exactly. Good. Really centralized. Good. How, is that centralized. is why everybody lost initiative because you were getting money from somewhere. You were getting money from oil. Before oil, was there no western region? Was there no cocoa? Sorry, sir, but I need to intervene. The general said something very important. And that was when he said about, or oh, your state have his own airlines. I think most of our states, they, just, they are just complacent. All That's they need right. to do they is lost to go initiative. to the federal government to and get collect money. money. And when they and get the money, they, they keep it. They don't do anything. Oh, uh, professor, okay. professor, ah. professor, please, don't... don't We're don't, talking don't, about West. I'm on please, Western please, television please, here. Please, don't, don't, don't let, don't, don't let take, take this thing for granted and put blame where it does not belong. As I reminded you a while ago, the revenue allocation for Mola eh, has been so appropriated by the central government, uh, by the military, and the oh, appropriated. Oh, 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 I'm coming, yeah, please, yeah, I'm coming. Yeah, please, yeah, let, yeah, me, yeah, let yeah, me say yeah, my yeah, own. Yeah, let me say, let, okay. let me say my own. The, the truth of the matter is this. We have been campaigning, and that is why it took some of us almost one and a half months to debate our colleagues, Nadeko abroad and Nadeko at home, it took us almost one and a half months to debate as to whether or not we should participate in the Ab Salam transition program. We sh because we are insisting on restoration to federal government system in Nigeria, the military, because of their own organogram, they wanted a system that is almost like similar to what happens when the commander-in-chief eh, talks and, be and, be and because downward. A federal system, an existing presidential system, does not make for accountability, does not make for res res responsibility, and that's what we are witnessing. The West, nowhere, no, no, nobody, if any governor here decides to, to do anything, contrary to what is happening. Do you know that before Ibrahim Dasuki panel on local government reform, all local government were local government in truth and in essence. My own uncles who were councillors were retired people and they were performing excellently. They were only taking sitting allowance. But with Ibrahim Dasuki panel eh, put there by Bobasajo, what is happening in Moshi is what must happen in Karanda Nobody can change that now because it has conferred on due advantage. To some section of the country, no, you okay, go okay. look and use, let me use Lagos as an example. Lagos in, in, in 1960 had four political divisions. 
Kano had two, look, 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 two, two political divisions. In that Kano, when it was created, a Jigawa state had been created out of it. It now has 27 local governments. Jigawa, 27 local governments. Kano now has 44 local governments. Lagos, which was double the size of Kano, has 20 local governments on its papers. So for every one vote, every one representative of Lagos, that Kano that was half of Lagos mm -hmm. now has more than three. So what can Lagos take to such a nation assembly? That I, I, I get, I get okay, it done. Well, so this is the problem that we, we must solve. The revenue allocation formula does not help our people any longer. When they go to Abuja to collect money, oh. uh, and you know, the, and I, I, was, I, I don't want to make, make revelations here, but there are things that we know about some of these characters who are ruling us. It is not because we as a people, the generality of Yoruba people, do not support what is going, going on. But because, look, uh, the, a situation has been created where you have, you don't have political party in Nigeria. Don't lie. Okay, Mr. Okay. What you have, Mr. Okay. what you have is electoral contest platform. Wow. Mr. Okay. Let's 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 no let's spread, let's no spread these perspectives yeah. around. No let's no spread, let's spread these perspectives no, around. Please. Professor Lazi was no. no Okay, so we're looking at a constitution that has already been established. Whether or not it has been tweaked to favor a certain group of people constantly. When we want to look into this document. I mean, it's in the hands of the legislators themselves. Now, what, what, what would you say is the way forward in terms of the feasibility of tweaking that document? Is that possible at this time? Uh, well, well, I just want to say, you know, I, I, we, all what we have been said, I've uh, written a lot about uh, structural, um, restructuring, mm -hmm. about constitutionalism, uh, about um, the, the working of democracy. But what is important that I always want to say from what we have been discussing so far, is that even the little that have been given to all these states, how much have they really done? How much have they really done to transform the lives of the people? Okay. You see, the problem we're having is this. If we continue to give more to the states, the state's authorities may not spread it or may not even transform it to better the lives of their people. Because of the fact that the majority of our people had, uh, they, are not, they are ignorant of their rights. They don't even know what they are entitled to. It is not an achievement for a governor to say he's paying salary. Yeah. That is not an achievement. <laughs> when you want to come in as a governor of a state, we ask you, what are the things you want to bring to your state? How do you want to transform your state? Or your state is close to Lagos. How many, yeah, for instance, now we travel a lot. The only place you can get to your state. Are you being specific on your state? Or yes, I'm speaking I'm, in general. I'm speaking of your state because this is our platform, please. This is our platform. Go on, Prof. So let us, let us don't address it from that matter. How many airlines can we bring out in your state? So that if I want to go from Ibadan to Portacourt, Ibadan to Enugu, I can go. I don't need to go to Lagos. Many, I said it before, look, look at it, we so much depend on Lagos. And that is our problem in your state. I, I, was at, I was at the forum when I saw that we were trying to talk about internally generated revenue. And you see that your state government, their bosses, your state government bosses, they bought it, your state, and you see the, the trade number, Lagos State there. Don't you see the number of revenue that have gone to Lagos? How can you one stop on your state having its vehicles and now registered in Lagos? What does that make sense in that? So what we need to do now is that whoever wants to come in now, we will challenge them and say, what do you want to do to transform the lives of people? You will see, transformation is not about just say you are just building roads alone. Mm. You also need to do more. Mm. You need to empower people. Mm. Thank you. you need to create wealth. Oh. Let people have jobs. A lot of people are out of the schools. They don't have jobs in your state. So what are we doing? <laughs> our governors, <laughs> our, our politicians, all they do is to gallivate around without doing anything. They don't even do anything. Well, it's not peculiar to mm. the state. And the, some will tell you that there is look, a problem. But generally now, let's look at it. The constitution has not been changed. Yes. And some will tell you that, look, the most economically viable commodities or resources yes. being controlled by the federal government. Yes. So, in that so? case, what, what kind of development do you expect from the I states? Know, my friend, you are giving bailouts. Could, what have you done with the what bailouts? Have, uh, think, uh, what's from general? Resource control should be the other of the day now and perhaps change the country. Forget it. <laughs> Even if they do resource control, you don't have any yeah, mineral in the West. What do you have? In what do you, have? Well, you should not what? exist. 
I would never saw that happening. He was not part of federal government. In fact, the Western region had never been part of, West, uh, of, of federal government until this dispensation. Until this dispensation. And they were galloping along in education, in economy. My brother Okwadogun spoke about uh, uh, the uh, uh, national economy fiscal. Fiscal, fiscal, fiscal revenue. Yes. The man who did it, Aboyade is a, for, for, uh, was from the West. Aboyade was chairman. Abi, we were teleguided by yes. Obasanjo from yes. the West. Yes. Obasanjo from the when I told you that the, the problem of this country starts from here, and I'm still saying so now. And everybody is happy that, yeah, it's a Westerner, somebody from the West that is doing this. This is how we want it. As at then. And as, now, and as at now. Look, what everybody is complaining now that Buhari had put all the houses in the place. It's a fact. Who was there when Obasanjo was there? Soludo was central bank. Well, I was uh, uh, was um, Minister of Finance. Ezekwe Sili was education. Right. Who was his national uh, security advisor? Who was his army commander? <coughs> and then when the, uh, huh, if the Yoruba man can do this, when we get there, we will do it. And they've done it, and everybody is shouting because there's an Alsa man there. Look, I will now look at the whole thing. They did not even <laughs> call him to some, to some meetings, but he was busy looking after his own people from health to education to social services. Life more abundant for everybody and freedom for all. He went on with it. Do you know that <laughs> the secretariat, the secretariat, uh, is, I mean, uh, Bodija, housing estate, okay. is equidistant to, there is a pond uh, after the secretariat, and there is Zongo to the left of, um, of Bodija. Okay. The equidistance, you know. It was a proper plan. The airport was just down between, before you, uh, you got to... Um, <laughs> University of Ibadan. Oh, he planned what was called El Erotropolis. I'm a student of that man. In 1978, when he saw me at Okuru Moose, he said, this is Alabi of Boss High School. He said, no, ah, this man is a General Alabi somehow, the man who made the plan that ended the Nigerian Civil War. It was, you are, your name was not Alabi Samadou when you were in school. Said, yes, sir. I've now become a Christian. I am telling you, forget this story about the federal government. I use the word incompetent and inefficient. If that it is, so it is. What stops the West from galloping? What stops your state from doing what it had to do? Thank you very much. I, okay. spoke, I spoke with a governor. I spoke with the governor who said he was going to give uh, school children uh, uh, clothes for, for, for Christmas. Why were you going to give them uh, clothes for Christmas? If you pay the salary of their parents, everybody will look after his child. We discussed on this same platform here in this television where we said feeding school children, you will need the statistics. We don't have it. Oshun State started it. They couldn't continue. Is Oshun State not APC? Did they not see why Oshun State uh, could not continue with it? They got more students to register to school, but they couldn't continue. You tell me, everybody is blaming the federal government. You have your own state. What stops you from running Coco the way it was run? And you got, you, the money you got from... Um, uh, from the federal government will have been an addition to what you were getting before. People lost initiative. Which okay, governor bro, did not okay, get okay, his okay. money? You know, bro, bro. Which national assembly here so or state assembly didn't get his own money? The same inequality and all, 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 but it failed. It has failed so far. 
Then the politics. If you want to correct this through a policy or something, and you want it to stay true, perhaps the votes will not be in your favor. Now the world now correct things. Well, the, you know, democracy, let, let me just point out as an academic, democracy is not the best of governments. It's just that it is the most acceptable so far. And because democracy talks about the, the generality of the number of people, that mm -hmm. is the highest number will always carry the day. So when it comes to issues of um, fiscal policy, um, derivation formula and all the rest, you will see the interest. Those who go to the national conference or constitutional conference, they are coming from different perspectives and backgrounds. So everybody wants to hear out their views from their own constituency. And when it comes to sharing of money, you, whether you like it or not, the North, as it is now, in terms of the number, in terms of sitting arrangement, will always have their way. Because they are in the majority. So it is difficult for us to change that now through the constitutional platform. But what I'm saying now is that there's a need for the Nigerian nation, that even the little we have now, to what extent can we, those who have been given, make the best out of it? That's my, that's my own concern. That is the that concern. Is, that is the, what is important now. If you talk about, law cannot solve all our problems. You see, that's the problem in Nigeria, because and that's why we are having so many constitutional amendments. You look at the Constitution of America. If you compare it with the volume in terms of Nigerian constitution, you, you will see that Nigerian constitution from 1999 today has been altered three times. And the volume, because we always want to strictly abide with the content of the constitution. The constitution is just to serve as a guide. There's also the need for you to have the customs and practices. But Nigerians, even when things are spread out very well, they continue to misconstrue it, misinterpret it, to suit their own purposes. So what we need to do now, is that every state, whether we don't want to talk of Oyoshi or any or all the states, mm -hmm. each state should look at the peculiarity of the environment and see how they can transform a lot of money. If you look at statistics, a lot of money has been given to all the states from 1999 to date. Let's get it. How much has been given to each state of the federation from 1999 to date from the federal government? And how what have they done? Okay. What have they done to it? So it's not about it's point. not about just saying that we are doing this, we are paying salaries, salaries that are what are you doing? There are some peculiarities in your state, Ocean State, Ogu State, that our governors and leaders need to come. Look at all these industrial states that were set up by Olowo at that time. So, how many have we done so far? The aerodrome that the General was talking about have been converted to shops. Yes. And uh, private uh, housing estates. Yes. Is that kind of development? Must we have just one? Must we have just one? Uh, yeah, um, what do you call it? Airport in a, in a state? So, how can we transfer? So. Most of it is, the other time, I will not have a dairy farm. It has been turned to housing estate. Of course. Housing estates were for their cronies. It's not as if they give it to civil servants. How many of you in the BCS or Parastatas can buy it there? Because when they say it, they will say, come and bring 50 million. That is the point. That you need to get the 50 million to buy a plot of land. That's the point. All right. Well, Mr. Avadogu, you must have a response to this. I mean, some things have been spoken about. It's not about the... The government in itself now, but of then Nigeria. the planning capacity. Forget Nigeria. The planning capacity of some of these individuals who have been running the government. Okay. Let me, let, let me start from this. Uh, May, I think it was May 4 last year, the beneficiaries, some of the beneficiaries of our law free education program, invited me to come and give them a lecture which was delivered at the Oyo State House of Chief Parliament here in Ibadan. Okay. And it was about peace development yeah, post our law. Uh, we lost it in Yoruba land first by the devaluation of our natural value system. Who our did? tradition. Who did? Who did? Yeah. He said we. Well, that's yeah. general. Go on. I say it without missing my word that the military that came eh, into our environment to come and govern us did. And they, this is the way they did it. Things, what we regarded as primarily cultural value system were ignored by making people who had no regard for work to come and become portfolio businessmen because they could get contracts. Military wanted to take out contracts to make money. They get 
characters who are jobless, they come here, they become immediate emergency contractors, and they become millionaires. They didn't return back to farm. And so we brought many of them here into the city, number one. Number two, there were governors here in this West eh, who were using stick to knock on the head of people who can be give back to them eh, as either civil, civil servant or, or something. They devalued our tradition, our respect for tradition and culture and values. And because it was possible for you to make money, use power to take what does not belong to you and use power to retain it. You devalue our system. Then that's one part of the story. I said to the young people last year, we won't get anywhere. You cannot ask for a, a return to the old system unless you take charge of the primary thing, which is the stomach. Our people are hungry. Poverty has ravaged the land. So um, I do not be, look at these characters in government have been able to do much for our people. What we needed to do really is for men and women of goodwill in our land. Do you know that we are supposed to be the number three producer of cocoa globally? What has happened to us? From the time that Oba, uh, by, by, Oba, uh, in, uh, Oba, by the military? No, I'm saying by the time the, the Awolo was using the, the cocoa oh. eh, money along with the, 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 the tax that it, it, put, it fixed on people to be able to give, give free education. We have not developed one inch on the usage of cocoa. We are still just, we produce the raw cocoa, dry it, and then we send it to some people at, maybe at 15 naira. And then they bring the same thing back in the so-called manufactured form, and they sell it to us at 500 or 1,000 naira. So what we are people, I'm saying, in order for us to be able to change the orientation of your people, yeah. the first thing is for us to make a, to ensure that we now go back to the basics. Fortunately, we have Institute of Tropical Ag Ag Agriculture here, where we could get the best yield of cocoa, the best yield of what we have the highest comparative advantage to produce, and make sure that we are not only producing them, but we take them to all through the <coughs> value chains. So that when you go through all the value chains, that all that remains is for the thing to be delivered to those who are, who are, going, to, who are, who are going to use them. That is to say, the cocoa that we produce, we should be able to process, it. process them yeah. into the last thing, the value chain. The value chain. Yeah. And then, in, in collaboration with the Nigeria Export pro, uh, yeah. promoting so, something, we could have been in touch with the, the end users in Europe. We can make many, several millions out of our people right. through cocoa that, that, value system. Right. There are other products we are, that, we are, that we are producing from here. And then finally, uh, uh, you can say, you can say anything that you have, you have against these characters governing Yoruba land. Eh? Because, in, in fact, my daughter <coughs> had a friend. They schooled at Buckingham eh? Law School. When they finished their masters, the, 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 the friend was practicing in a law firm. Do you know that one of our governors already was buying two houses <coughs> over there? And it, when they told me, I was shocked. Which is part of what this one had had. This is what again is doing. But I'm thinking that our people, because of the nature of what the military had done, those who can contest election, what, the, what those who can contest, contest election today? There's none of them who really can. Can you contest election today? Okay. Well, you cannot. Let's talk about okay. let, let, let's you cannot. Get, right. let's, let's get to specifics. Right. Okay. That's, that's okay. Specific. Yeah, 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 here is the point. Here is the point. The houses who are bringing cattle to the west or to the south, I will not in like that. Because they were bringing disease. What did they do? They formed fashola farms. Fashola farms had the cattle the West ate in this country. There was another one somewhere in Nikiti or so. I will all establish that. He had seven and six minimum wage. My people need the money. The federal government was paying five shillings. He had the initiative. The country followed him. 
When he put the television there, the North put the television there, the East put the television there. He put the stadium there, the North put the stadium. He started Ife, they started uh, Amadou Bello and all that. Why did you lose the initiative everybody is talking about? Look, was Obasanjo not from the West here? He handed over these things, you say, your, uh, our, our, our values. Which, which house are man? After Gawan, when Gawan was there as head of state, uh, Adebayo was here as governor, a Yoruba man from the West. Who bastardized the place in the West? S sorry. After that was another Yoruba man. After that was uh, this man from Miloni Adisa. So who are we talking about here? Let's mm. talk about sorry. the Western region. I'm on the television we, we, of Western region. Sas. You couldn't even collect your garbage in the street. Sas. Sirs, please, we are discussing Nigeria at 58. If you are Not discussing Nigeria at 58, region. you are specific about your problem. What the problem we have at that time, but what we had was a Nigerian problem, which I will all did not want to have anything to do with it. The two mistakes I will all made in this country. Number one, he said he was going to probe the military. The military that was going to hand over to you, so they refused him doing it. The second one, he said he was going to change the feudal system. The houses had majority, according to the British. And since then, we could not get our census right. To get your census right, you know what you need? It's very simple. What's it? Just tell people to pay tax according to their population. <laughs> within the individual states? Or See? Within the individual states? If within your state. You pay tax to the federal government, and the federal government will, will enable them to be able to do that. How will they do that? The, what are we talking about here? Re, when we are talking about the north, the, where is north? Where is north? Each state, everybody has his own state. Talk about your state. You where is north? Well, well, is Benue not, not in the north? Is Benue not in the north? It's part of the north. Is Bono not in the north? Is uh, uh, Plateau not in the north? Is Nasarawa not in the north? Is uh, Iloni Kwara not in the north? Is Kogi not in the north? They built a road within two years from Kaduna to Abuja. For 10 years, they've not been able to build uh, Abuja to, to Kogi, uh, to uh, Lokoja. For 10 years. They, they and you want to, and you're blaming the federal government. What about your own state? You couldn't come. Travel from Lagos to Ibadan, you couldn't collect the garbage. Thank you very much. Now, we want, let, let's just you know, broaden the whole thing, not the Western region. You know. The uh, marginalization we complain of, even in the northern part of the country, they still complain of it. Of course. The, the values that he mentioned that we've lost now, mm. when it comes to agriculture and those things that we were known for, even in the southeast, mm. nothing was there again. Not, nothing is there right now. Mm. As we speak, even though not, the agriculture is not even thriving as it were, it seems to be a national problem now. Now, how do we correct that to okay. grow the economy holistically? Okay, I thank you very much for this for for, for, for this uh, question. The first thing to do yeah, is for us to recognize that we don't have a nation; we have a country. In an, the a people must recognize who they are before they can then move forward. Nigeria is gifted beyond our compeers in our region, even almost in the entire continent. Look, we have areas with highest comparative advantage. Nigeria laws must change. Fiscal federalism will enable us to take the initiative, the right initiative to grow what we are best at eh? and under agreed terms of taxes will pay to the center. Today, because there is no impetus for self-empowerment, uh, uh, um, because they can always go at the end of the month, federal allocation formula. Eh? People have become so lazy, unreasonable, and consumptive. 
For, for example, there are areas of the Northeast that are best for some product, uh, pro produce. Nigeria government already, I know this was for sure, I'm not trying to, uh, to exaggerate. I know the, uh, under the uh, 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 ANCOR program, yeah. Yeah. Eh, being, 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 being ad, uh, administered by the Central Bank, they're doing a lot of, putting a lot of money for the production of rice. Yeah, eh? it, it has helped. It and, has. and it's doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of things are happening in that regard. Uh, what they need to do to the people in the southwest here is for, 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 the, for us, let, 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 they should not impose it on our people, but they should give other fiscal federalism. We should be allowed now to regroup and bring out this commodity, cocoa, remains a valuable product that is of the greatest importance and use in several parts of the world. Um, uh, uh, um, cashew nuts eh, is one of them that is of highest comparative. Uh, and we have, apart from India and Indonesia, we also have part of the best in the world. Some of these products we can produce here to the, going through all the value chains for us to be able to earn money. You know the evil that oil had done to us. Whether because of the of the emergence of oil, we left all that we were doing. Eh? Everybody was waiting eh, to collect what they can get from petroleum. Eh? Okay. The east. I'm sorry. Do you know that there are so many a, a, a few set of minerals that are, are located in some part of that part of the world that have been left untapped. Un are now used, which could be up to our strategic advantage. What they have been, 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 what is being done even in the Eastern Bloc today is that they are redefining coal usage. They are cleaning up coal and getting it used for power. Right. Yeah, so what I'm advocating for is that we are campaigning for sovereign national conference. They have rejected it. But I'm of the persuaded strong opinion, and I'm putting it, I'm putting it in my book, and I'll continue to say it. Not until Nigeria is restored to a federal system of government, we will never have it right. So because the so sovereign national conference that could lead to this integration of the country. It's a lie. It's a bogus lie. It's a bogus. And we, we laid our, lie, our lives on, 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 on the motor to tell you the fact that that is not the correct thing. Do you know immediately because we uh, we promoted Alliance for Democracy and we won in the Southwest here. Yeah. The first thing, as the General Secretary of Affairs, the first thing I advise our people to do is let us use the advantage of, the, of, our, of our parliament. Let's commence the, 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 the motion for the, for the structuring, the restoration to, to, the, to federalism. They agreed with me. I wrote the paper and a committee was set upon it and we agreed upon it. So we said, we told all our governors, we'll be coming to your parliament. Let your parliament initiate the process of making the solution. And that was done. I have all the copies in the House of Assembly in Lagos, in, in Oyo, mm -hmm. in, in Odo, in, 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 in Ogun. We did it. But having regard to what has happened to us in terms of this population that I alluded to, I referred it to before, you, maybe you don't take it serious, okay. that in the National Assembly, hmm. in the National Assembly, Kano, which was half of Lagos, now has almost three times the size of Lagos. So you can't take anything there and, and, and you win. You will not win. Okay. So if you, you cannot win, I will be, I'm, you know, there are agitation by ethnic nationalities now. They have been working upon, Oanez and Digbo, the remnants of Afeniferi, then the Middlebird Forum, eh? They, they've been working seriously at, as together that until we go back to federalism, eh, nothing will work. All right. Well, well Mr. Okay. And, and finally, okay. I, I beg to, I beg, I, I, I beg to, to, to I, I want to allow me to say this. This federal uh, uh, executive presidential system is not meant for this environment. The place where it works, America, is a colony of an assemblage of so many people, and they have the biggest economy to tomorrow. 
We don't have such money here. Okay, let's jump in. Eh? Let's talk about some other areas. Now, in the process of giving blame in one direction or the other, so far, we have not raised the issue of corruption. Oh, now, my corruption, God. Corruption in itself <laughs> has seen many colors. It's in all sectors. Yes. You cannot say it belongs in one half of the divide, maybe no, the no, military no, 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 or the civilian. No, I can tell. I can. Was it the same way 58 years ago? No, sir. No, sir. I cannot even give you an, a, a typical example that you, that, that you make put you to sleep. The Constitutional Conference of 1957, uh, the Western Region people went, the delegation, with our law. Lo and behold, Papa the one got, got sick. The parliamentary secretary, eh, to law, he got sick. So, during the evening when they were, they were, they were supposed to have their dinner, uh, uh, Papa's friend and the one's friend came to the table to say, ah, uh, 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 when he, uh, he uh, was sick, we have rushed him to hospital. When they finished eating, eh, Baba went to his own room and brought out his own money and gave to the friends who would be going to the hospital. He said he would see him in the afternoon of the second, of the second day. He, he asked the others now to contribute their own personal money eh, for, to take care of the medical bill of uh, Baba Diwane. It was when they assembled on their way back that people were asking, Papa, but we are here on official delegation. Why are you asking us to use our personal money to pay for uh, uh, Papa Diwane's uh, 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 sickness. He told them that public money is not for the usage, for the personal usage of the individual in government. It's for the public. That if you or anyone went ahead now to court gonorrhea, you are asking him eh, to allow the usage of, of money, eh, of public money, to fund such a thing. He will not allow it. Do you know that Awolawa was using, he was driving his car from his body here to, to, to the government house. He would never live in government house, you remember? So our people need to get something clear from their heads, which they are not, they are not prepared to do. And that's to see everyone that you find here today is about accumulation of wealth. Corruption had eaten so deep into the system. First, it is inflated contract. Contract that will not be done. And then anyone who attempts to say, let us deal with this matter. Ah, you, you have caught your card. There's somebody, all the people, I will assemble some group of young people from Ofa who come and shout, ah, you are arresting your card because it's an Ofa man. That's the reason. Hmm. Eh? So all the thieves, both in uniform and non uniform, because the uniform people cannot do it without the, 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 the non-uniform, the, the civilians. All of them are collaborators. And when they are still in the public fund, to, to be candid, there is no discrimination in that. I'm saying you cannot get anything done in Nigeria, as it's present constituted, until you do decisively some critical things. And what was done is what I recommend. What was done in Singapore is what I recommend to Nigeria. In my lecture, just do 12 lecture two years ago at to, to Lagos. I, 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 I used the illustration. In, 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 in Singapore, what, the, what they knew that when the British left, they too were in the Perulo state like we are today in Nigeria. So the first thing they did was this. They look at the salary scale between the, the, the civil public, the, the private venture, and that of the public. They did a lot to virtually bring the thing to equal. So that Anyone who is working in government does not feel a failure mm. to the ones who are, who are in the private sector. Mm. Then number two, they made sure that you are totally covered by your act. If you do anything while you are in government office, in furtherance of your own personal fortune, either now or when you have left office, if you are caught, it is not only that everything will be co co collected, you will be punished, you will be, will be put in jail. 
So, and that has caught corruption significantly in, in, that, country. in, in that country. Today, you cannot pay 10,000 naira salary to the ordinary man. And then, uh, 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 parliamentarians, National Assembly, I think what the, the, the first, one of the things that is declared is that it's 13 point something million naira, the, the, what, the, what they collect per month. You can't have this, such a gap, and then you say you will not have corruption. Okay, but General, sorry. General, sorry. Uh, General, no, let my brother. Okay, okay, let's go to Professor first. Let's it, talk about corruption. Corruption now. Uh, was it so in the beginning, you know, so it is now, and so, so she shall be forever. Well, tell us, what difference is and why is it that uh, it's still a very big issue now? Well, I, I just want to say that um, any act of criminality has always been from the beginning. It's just that the proportion differs. Uh, uh, because, um, for instance, if you look at in the 60s, the population of Nigeria was about 50 million or 40 million. So the number of people that were corrupt, or so to say, will not be as magnificent as now that we have a 180 million and in terms of the spread. So the, the dynamism might have been different, but it has always been there because it is in part of human nature for some people to be criminally leading. You know, whether you like it or not, in any system, not only here. But then what is important, like we have said so far, is that um, you need the law to redirect certain steps or conduct in our society. But our problem is that the majority of those who are in position to make those laws are those who fortunes have come to them. So that it's difficult for you to use the law to change it. Like Singapore, as Mr. Okwadi was not talking about, you know, it's like, it's a civil law system. When you are charged to court for an offense, it is you that will prove your innocence. But here, when you charge somebody to court, it's deemed to be what? Innocence. On the proving with you. So you just stay down and you begin to look for And that's why EFCC and ICPC have not really done much. Because most of the times, when they arrest people, the pressure now, the social media, the politics in the system will not allow them to do an investigative uh, process that will be so expansive and that will be thorough. So there is this urge to bring them to court. And when you bring them to court before getting the SCB that you need, then at the end of the day, you won't get you, a conviction. You know, Professor Lazaroso, I just have to butt in there. Uh, you come under the spotlight in this regard. The legal arm of government, the judiciary, in itself. Many have said uh, it hasn't done well in 58 years at all. Some say it has been stifled by the executive and that's why we have so much impunity. What would you be saying in terms of the journey so far for the judicial? No, it's not, it's not correct to say judiciary have not done so much because there, there's no democracy that can try without the judiciary because from time to time there will be cases, there will be issues that the judiciary needs to, to come in. But well, like I said in some other uh, fora that I've attended and discussed about, you know, we have witnessed another transition. And then when the 2015 general elections came mm -hmm. and the new government, I'm not a politician, but we'll follow what operates and what is trending. Now, you can't fight corruption without having legal and institutional framework, which is quite outside the normal laws that you have. So, and then those who are, you now discover that for about three and a half years, or three years, the National Assembly have been fighting with the executive. So, it is not, there is no avenue, there is no template through which these laws can be passed. And that was why we have been having this, some of these challenges. So, but I believe a time will come when we are going to have a board leader who will take up decisions in that regard. We need a national legislation, one, to confiscate properties. If you have so so amount of money outside the shore of Nigeria, let the government make a legislation and confiscate it. If you now feel that you have a legitimate means of handling it, then you go to court and ask the court to leave that confiscation. That is what is done. But the moment you allow people, because what we have now is that individuals are richer even than the government. So there is no way when they come together, they will not fight or intimidate the government. And that is what is happening now. So how can somebody say, uh, you have lived for about um, maybe barely 50 years mm -hmm. and you have acquired about 8 billion naira. What sorts of business have you done? So those are the things that we need to challenge. Legally. Well, uh, yes. General, you how see, was this in the past? And uh, I will also <laughs> ask that uh, 
which of these forms of government or system will best, you know, tackle corruption? Military regime? Well, now that, now, the, now that you say we should be talking about Nigeria mm -hmm. as a whole, there are many ways you can fight corruption. I'm a strategist. And if I try one method and it didn't work, like Boko Haram and the rest of them, it didn't work, I change my tactics. I change my aim. It is my aim that will dictate the strategy and tactics to apply. For instance, we arrested A, and EFCC took him to court or whatever. Mm -hmm. For 10 years, they've been on it. And so, the man was found not guilty, or the man who took him to court died or something. Okay. What happens if I call you? I'm the president of Nigeria, and I call you to come and see me. My friend, this is what I heard about you. Here it is here. You have 20 billion in your hand. Mm -hmm. I know you are not going to tell me the truth. This is the president talking to you. But here it is. If you give me 10, million, 10 billion out of the 20, I allow you to go with the remaining 10. It's two of us discussing in this room. If you agree, let me have the 10 billion and I'll let you go. Let's take the first scenario. You give me the 10, 10 billion and I'll let you go. And I call you back a week or two later. I brought me between two of us again. How did you get it? There is a Nigerian boy that I know in Houston, Texas, where I live, who has 40 methods, 40 methods of cheating HLP, Houston Light and Power, that's NEPA. The, what they know is 13. This boy knows 40. He went to jail. They gave him half a million dollars to write exactly how he did it. That's government. Wow. Solely to HLP, the power company. They plugged those holes. They made their money back. The Nigerian boy got out of jail. So if I then call you, how did you make it? Give me a one B, talk to me. This and this and this, all right. But don't let it happen again. I took that point to give it to my staff. We plugged that hole. Mm -hmm. It was contract. It was this. It was that. Some will lie. But you will have gotten 10 billion. The amount of money you will have spent going to court, the number of years, the trouble, the attorney. Look, if I stole 10 billion and I give the attorney 1 billion, another attorney 1 billion, I give the judge 1 billion, he's not going to get that for the rest of his life. He will take it and get away with it. Many things you have not had again. Um, Minor said they are harassing him because he knows that there is, there, there is some money in trillions of Naira somewhere they are spending. They quickly whip him out of the country. Good. About a week or two ago, mm -hmm. the police, not FCC, not government, is the police who said they found 489 or 498 million dollars in, in banks which are not put in the TSA. All right? How did he get that? Okay. General Isama, so let, you let's, let's use other strategy. Mm -hmm. If one does not work, exactly. you use another let's strategy. Talk Mr. Please, so far. You, you're talking about law. No. Yes, I listened to, to the professor here. Uh, I, 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 I practice law myself now for over 30 years. I was the editor of the, of the, the only journal of the Nigerian Bar Association under that law, Kabasha. So I can talk law eh, strongly here. 
the first thing that had happened to us is that, again, you can blame me uh, for being militophobia. Nigerian judiciary was one of the best in the Commonwealth before. We were courted by the, by the low and the, and the high. In fact, critical Commonwealth institution that needed assistance, legal assistance, Nigeria was always represented. Justice Sir Justice Udo Doma was the chief justice of the court of Uganda. Uh, Sir Dr. Uh, Professor Tasli Metala Elias was equally quoted and he was instrumental in the drafting of, of the constitution of Botswana and he was chief justice. Um, Dr. Olu or Nogurua, eh? equally served in that capacity. You have uh, the, 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 the man from Abekuta, um, uh, format of the general, eh? okay. who, be, who he was in, he was in the egg. Bola Jivola. We were part of the best in the world until the military came. And you know, the law is the first casualty when the military stayed, stayed their coup. The law, the constitution is, the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the suspended. And when the Nigerian legal minds wanted to challenge that, and that was what happened in the case of Kike Lomada, Adamalekon, eh? in 1970, under Justice Shomolu Tribunal, because it was put there. You know, they always do this thing to, to massage the ego of the civilians. Eh? Section 666, eh? the, 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 the constitution, the, the court is free to do things. And they wanted, wrote me really well and wanted to, to, to test that. I was at the tribunal here at the parliament. And you know, immediately because it was said that the decree cannot override the constitution. The constitution. Mm. They, they, they came with the supremacy and enforcement of power decree in 1970. And with that, the, anything that the military did eh, mm -hmm. was final. Well, I'm coming now. Okay. So he wanted to know the foundation of cor the corruption. As soon as that one happened, whatever they did was unchallengeable. We were mindful. The, 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 the a, a chief judge of Lagos, he said decree, eh, it's almighty. Eh? As no language was pronounced, it was during the Bangladesh period. Yes. So they could do, they get away and, 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 and do whatever they wanted to do. Now, the judiciary that ought to be the epitome, that should really have saved us, have been so compromised by the so called military. Because, first of all, they constituted themselves as the executive, they became the law making body, and they sit down. In an appellate sitting, a judiciary. So much that, in order, when they were constituting some panels, eh, they make some of these judges chairman. Any of the judges that ruled against them, like the case of Obeya, eh, from Bennett State, the judge that ruled that, 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 that thing, they didn't, they didn't give, give the, the, the person, eh, they didn't renew his car. The, house, the, the furniture that, uh, that uh, needed to be put in his house <laughs> was no more given. <laughs> so consequently, Babangida capped it up when he came eh, to compromise the judiciary. Okay. He bought a baby bench for the Supreme Court justices, and which, which was challenged. Ghani Farami went to court. Eh? From that perspective, mm -hmm. eh, Nigeria judiciary itself is a compromised uh, institution. There are good elements there, but there are bad things. Have you ever had in your life that a, a Nigerian court, federal high court judge, we have two billion in his account. They ask him, "What job are you doing?" Eh? You know. So no, what I'm saying to you is to let you know where the where, where the corruption is difficult mm. eh, to fight because ultimately, as much as Benjamin Buhari had been doing to fight this corruption, he had a problem, and he had gone to court. First, first of all, they established justice uh, 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 professor Isisage's committee. To make it to, to do take all measures 
to see how we can cap corruption. They worked seriously. They put in the, all their efforts. In, they knew that there was a missing gap in the investigation. They knew there was a missing gap in prosecution. So they now packaged a, a number of set of lawyers and policemen and investigators, gave them orientation in six zones of the country. They now produced a master plan, a, 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 a master sheet for prosecution. They made a bill, draft a bill, approved by the executive. It has been sent to the National Assembly. It has spent two and a half years in the National Assembly now. So because you are looking for, you are talking about laws. Mm. It has been there in the National Assembly, but they will not pass it. Because at least about 12 to 13 senators today are facing prosecution in the, in the, by, by, by EFCC. Eh? So before you can, you, you need, like I, I told a, a, a high, a, one of the highest person in government in Abuja when I was there this last week, you were, in, were in trouble. There was a delay in the, in the appointment of somebody to head Nigerian judiciary. It was not because. It was because there were glaring things that were found against him. So you will say the thing will end up in the, in the court. The court itself is already compromised. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Is that's why those of us who are convinced that a parliamentary system of government eh, is the best in the circumstance. You know, I, I just let, have to, let me just come okay, in here sir. and stop. I don't yes, because I, in the background of all that, I didn't hear you giving credit to the fact that at least in the history of Nigeria, we now have a former military ruler who decided to make corruptions battle one of his mandates but what, I, I didn't say so now i said but in spite of all that what general Buhari is doing prior to what? that obasanjo also established the efcc let's not forget. okay okay thank you very so, much thank you very much let's for the the I, I i want to i want to i said that with all without without i and without uh, being being i know that i'm not perfect what i'm saying i have total regard for the establishment of that body but I know that it, it was a wrong thing, wrongly headed. The job that the ESCC is doing, the job that the ICPC is doing today belong to the police. These people, my brother here, is, is his own people. He was not in control. He was not, he, he, he's not interested in, 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 in politics. He's, he's a military man to the core. Excellence. But the, those, the politicians in military uniform who are presiding over him, they went ahead to create these things because they totally subverted the efficiency of the Nigerian police. Did they allow the police to function? All the training, all the money that they needed to, 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 to be given. You know, once upon a time, the, have you ever, oh, you, okay, you guys, you won't, when you talk about mobile police, you don't find them in town. Mobile police, you are not found in town. They are supposed to come in at a crucial period. So, the police had been subverted. So you create all these things. And this was why you, the, we're spending almost 80% of our total revenue to run up the, uh, the bureaucracy. So there's no money eh, for capital expend, expenditure. I give kudos to the establishment of, of that thing. Uh, Buhari is doing his utmost. And that is why corruption is fighting back fiercely. Well, let's quickly look at uh, Professor Latumbosun. Well, uh, uh, Daddy mentioned how the, perhaps the military initiated the corruption within the judiciary, but we've been practicing dem democracy for a, a while now. And one thought that, uh, one thought it could have, it should, it ought to have changed, the narrative ought to have changed, but now we see, you know, judges being paraded being, and all of that. Is it a problem of the military itself or uh, what's happening really? Is it the law or implementation of it from, you know, uh, the judges now? Well, well um, I want to look at it from another perspective. Um, the military might have had their own shortcomings, uh, but they have been out of the system for some time. Uh, but some of the problems are still manifesting, are still recurring. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because of the nature of the type of people we have and the process through which we appoint Get our me. judges nowadays. Thank you. No doubt, like... Um, Mr. Pardo to have said, we have the good ones. We also have those who are not too good in the system. And I think it's also about the Nigerian problem. Nigerian problem is an aspect of which we don't celebrate uh, proficiency. 
what we celebrate is mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And based on political interests and other vested interests. In the past, when judges are to be appointed, it is judges who are in the courts that lawyers come to their case, to their courts to appear that will make recommendation that they will now call you, Mr. Lagbaja, we want you to come to the bench. Because we have seen you performing. But nowadays, what we do is about constitutionalism. The constitution says for you to be appointed as a high court judge, you must have been called about 10 years ago. That's, That's just it. So some people are lawyers. They say maybe some of them are event planner. Some of them are modernists. Some of them are um, in media houses and uh, some other places. And then they wait for 10 years. As soon as they are 10 years, they get their uncle, who is very influential. That person will submit the name to the authority of the state. And then they are appointed. Tell me, how can such a judge perform? Because he doesn't have the background, he doesn't have the wherewithal to do the job. So that's one of the problems. And then we are now bringing all sorts of personalities and characters into it. And that's why we are having some of these challenges. But we still have some. Because when they want to appoint, they will still get some people who are actually good. But they also bring in some other people because to balance the interest. In the past, nobody bothers where you come from. Whether you are a Christian, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are atheist, that is not. But nowadays, they want to look, even if it is the Southwest, I mean, is it from Oyo or from Ogu or from Ekiti? All those factors are there now. So that has affected the quality and the personality and integrity of those who have been appointed into, into the judiciary. All right, uh, Professor, I beg, let me tell the, 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 the world. But why the Yoruba nation? You see, you don't sympathize with people like me. I'm from Ofa. If there's anything to be shared in the North, Lugard put me as a northerner. <laughs> if I go there, they will tell me that I'm a Yoruba man. Yoruba to the call. So, if, when I come to, when they are sharing it in, this, in, 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 in Lagos or in, or in Badan, eh? they, 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 they say I'm from the well, so, so you can see. Generally, some that part of <laughs> we're running out of time. We need to maximize it. Let's talk about security. Yeah. You, you, you fall under that bracket. You may have something to say. You could just add that to it. But the security situation in the country today, looking at it from your own military perspective, are we using the right tactics? What are we doing wrong? And how did we even get to this uh, terrorism situation that we are? <laughs> Let me, <clears throat> the problem of the country is the structure. And the structure is the ultimate. It should start with the national policy on every issue. If the brake of your car fails, you don't go repairing the brake. You repair the course. Because if you repair the brake, that course is still there and it will cause that failure again. If this water is leaking, you don't keep pouring in more water because you want it to be full. You must repair the leakage. The security architecture, you, 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 you must praise the military the way they are. They face these people, they face Boko Haram, they face kidnappers, they face militants. They have done very well. It is a failed government that makes the military to fail, if I've read my book. It was because the Afra government failed that the Afra army failed. And we were able to capture them and they surrendered to the federal troops and Marine Commando. They did not surrender to northern troops. Iliomade, Anifooshe, uh, Olaoni, they were Yoruba boys that ended the Nigerian Civil War. Take it or not. What has happened? Like, I will start from my Tessine. Pity you don't. You don't have time for these things. When my Tessine started, I went to Danjuma, was the chief of army staff. I was like what you call permanent secretary, I was principal general staff officer, mm -hmm. like it's number two. Can I go handle this thing? What's your business? 
there is a commander there. And I say yes. But evil, let's nip it in the board. It's easier and cheaper than confronting evil. It's all right. By the time we discuss, it's okay. You have 30 days. In 15 days, it was over. You are talking of security. Let's take Boko Haram. Are these Nigerians, if they are Nigerians, let's treat them so. That was what I did with my Tessine. Those who are, if they are not Nigerians, there is a war against the country. Take it that way. The country right now voted one million, one billion dollars mm -hmm. to fight Boko Haram. And I think they voted another 2.5 billion to fight insurgency and so on. That's 3.5. How much have we voted? It's because when you say we should be talking about Nigeria now, because we were talking about the West, about your state, now Nigeria. How much has the government voted for peace in Nigeria and in that area? There is oppression for peace in different names. Have we exhausted that? Part of which are those who are the oppressions you mentioned. Those who are those who during my testimony, those who are in jail, we call them out. What is your pain? And they said, oh, this uh, house of Lani wanted to finish all we are canoes. But the people you are killing are your own people. He said, yes, those are the people that supported them. We call them again. What do you suggest? They brought the suggestion. Hmm. What is Boko Haram fighting for? When we release them from jail after interrogation, those who are not guilty and guilty and all that, we release those who are not guilty. Those that were not guilty were released to go to where? To do what? They went back to Boko Haram, where they got free women, they got food. And they wanted to kill Nigerians anyway, because in their mind of minds, they are unhappy with the country. If your people are unhappy with your country, if they are unhappy with their country, this is what you get. Right now, almost every Nigerian that you talk to, particularly in the South, are unhappy with the country. All the Northern boys are happy with it. So who do you want to change the law? You want somebody to reduce the salary. The national, somebody who's earning one million a day, you want him to change the law so that you can get five naira? The restructuring we're talking about is what will bring in the correct security architecture. Because that restructuring is the ultimate. It will start from the policy. Take JAM, for instance. Mm -hmm. If let's say JAM, <coughs> this man is to say how many people, how many students will take JAM this year? They say 20. This man is to collect 10, 10 naira from the 20. Mm -hmm. This man will collect the money. We therefore know that he will collect 200 naira. You have put the institution in place. How does he cheat? How does he become corrupt? So that's, in, that's one of those things that went wrong. You take TOEFL and SAT in this country. It's a chain. They are a chain of events. It has affected education. It has affected tourism. <clears throat> Do you know the number of our Nigerians that are in Ghana Polytechnic, for instance, paying foreign exchange? Education is part of tourism, not just women with, uh, with bare breasted. No. So, jump itself need to be restructured in such a way that international students will come to Nigeria and bring foreign exchange. You will do it like SAT or TOEFL. 
It is not JAM, which is local. Nigerian universities is not in number one to 1,000 in, in the world. And in Africa, you are not in one to 100. Why? Because you have localized it. For instance, the chief of customs in Cameroon is a lady. In 1973, when I was acting governor in, in a, a Midwest state, and when we established the University of Benin, this woman was there and schooled in there. In University of Ibadan, Americans have schooled there before. In our universities, foreigners have schooled there before. But do you take jump in US? Do you take jump abroad? So those are the things that we need to restructure as part of our policy if you say we want Nigerian University to be number one and 200 in the world, then you restructure the education. That means you will have a national summit on education. That will take you to the next level. We don't have the ideology of whether we are going to have federalism or unitary. That's why people cannot debate. Now you have election and they are talking about uh, whether somebody will have a throw pass or the other one will, will go for election or something. Is that how it's done abroad? You mean if uh, President Trump is going to stand another election, they would then say they've given, me, given him a free pass, everybody voted for him to go through this. That's not democracy. We need to, that's the restructuring we're talking about is the ultimate. After you've gone through the policy on mm -hmm. each one, on agriculture, on uh, economy, mm -hmm. and so on. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Wadoko, I haven't identified all the problems and the apportioned blames, as it were. Now, how do we correct the anomalies, you know, from members of the public now, especially when there seems to be a mindset of wanting to buy anything that is foreign, and local production is suffering, and even when you produce locally the market and the Nigerians that you expect to buy, they believe it's inferior. We have a mindset, a culture of wanting anything that is foreign. Thank you very much. Well, I would like to submit to the viewers that as painful as a situation really has been for time immemorial, and in spite of the effort that some of us have put in to right the wrong and the risk to our lives, I beg anyone who's listening that without playing an ostrich, the first thing for us to do that will enable us to take off to right the wrong is to restore our country. We secured Nigeria independence on a federal constitutional arrangement. Let us return to that. We have been living a lie as a country that Nigeria is a federal republic of Nigeria. There is nothing federal in what we are doing today. So let, so let us restore our country to a federal system of government. Every other thing follows. A lot of the wrongs, anomalies that you have noticed here and there, they stem from this unitarization, centralization of everything that the military brought on our country. I mean, sympathy with the agenda that if you run Nigeria as a parliamentary system of government, it is cost effective, it is responsible because everyone in government as an executive and as a legislature is a member of the parliament. So if people have problems in their various constituencies, they, can, they will have either a weekly meeting or a fortnight meeting where those matters will be resolved once and for all. And then the Prime Minister, who is Primo's inter Paris, is not aloof from the electorate. It is not at the end of another three and a half, four years that they will see him again. They see him almost every day through their representative. In, in Lagos, during the Second, the second uh, Republic, Dakande fortnightly will be at the party secretariat of the, of the UPN. 
any Lagosian, any resident in Lagos who wanted to see the governor could go there. It is first come, first served. That is what we have lost. The governors today in Nigeria is about bribing anything that you can, including the electoral officer, policeman, security for you to be declared as winner. And then you have enough money also to bribe the judiciary, the tribunal, so that you can be declared, so that you can have the key to the store okay, so eh, so of the rich. Thank you very much. And I, I, dare, I dare say, with given that such a scenario, Nigeria will have difficulty in proceeding. I'm appealing to you young people, be prepared to fight your battle. You are too docile, compromising with evil. You want somebody to go and do it for you. Nobody will do it for you. You have to fight your own battle. The people where they are running, where they are running to. Some people pay the supreme sacrifice. I was ready to pay for it. I was prepared morally, psychologically, ideologically. And that was why I confronted the military. With, the, with open arms, I have nothing. At the general secretary and spokesman of Nadeko, my life was at the highest risk. They, I was on the ground for almost five months before I was arrested. I didn't. I, I have no, I, my, my own pain goes into insignificance when I notice, see the pain that Nigerian people are going through today. Okay. And that's why everybody must, must cheat. You, you go to court now, your file will be missing unless you bribe the, the, the court clerk. All right, well, we'll take your advice on that yes. for the youth. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. well, Professor Latuboson, round enough now. What are your thoughts, especially from the arm of government where you represent? Um, what would you like to see? Yeah. All I just want to say is that uh, we, it's the kind that we are witnessing the 58th anniversary of the Nigerian nation as an independent nation. There have been ups and downs. There have been areas of strengths and weaknesses. <coughs> there are areas that we need to rejuvenate and make sure that we make amendments. And, but by and large, Nigeria has potentials. In terms of the numerical strengths of the population, in terms of the endowment of human persons, but what we need to do is that we need to empower the majority of Nigerians by enlightening them on their rights, their obligations, uh, and also to let the electorate also know the value and the power of uh, their political rights and ensure that we get the best. I think also we also need to let the popular Nigerians also know that um, we should begin to task our leaders. Whoever wants to come into public office must come with a um, recipe of what he intends to do. So not that just because you have belong to a particular party, just continue to vote for you without mm -hmm. you telling us so that we can make you accountable. At the end of the at the end of the day, whether what you have promised is actually what you have not you have done. So I think we need more of that from the generation. And then the youth also, because the youth represent the majority of the number. We need to reorientate our youth because many of them are not so politically conscious. They don't know their rights. Most of what they do are just bad wagon effects. Maybe they are just given some little money and then they, they mortgage their rights and future. So there's a need to draw their consciousness towards ensuring that we get a better nation. Thank you very much. Well, finally, Retired General, so what is expected of members of the public, ordinary Nigerians now, on how to grow Nigeria and make it a place of pride? Just uh, like you have just said, ordinary Nigerians, you are part of it. As the press. If you interview a politician, I have had a situation where you say, I will put in enabling environment excuse me sir what is this enabling environment you are going to put in place mm -hmm. he cannot tell you these are just sentences they've crammed so the press need to play a very big part you have always done that during Adeko, it was a yoruba man tokoya that truncated it so when I talk about the West, does anybody stop the governor in the Western region or you and the rest of them from organizing his local government? No. Mm. So let the Yorubas have their agenda and from their agenda select their own people to govern them. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. That's about it.
have, have potentials. That's what we have always been having. Eight years. When we translate it into reality, sure, we hope that will come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, uh, gentlemen, Thank here, you very much. I would dare say, elder statesman, mm -hmm. we have been talking to on this 58th Independence Anniversary celebration. Mr. Ayo Paroku is a lawyer, a Yoruba nationalist, a champion, and, well, the convener of the Nadeko group, which was a pro democracy group after June 12th, the chieftain of the Afeni Ferry. It was really. General nice. Secretary. Oh, yeah, the General Secretary. Thank you so much. But for 15 years. <laughs> it was nice talking to you, sir. Uh, we hope you end this, uh, well, beef with the military at some point, sir. <laughs> the, no, there's no there, there's no hiding place. Um, but my book will be out by the grace of God, <laughs> titled The Gone Egemony. Oh, well, yeah. Professor Adeni Alatsubasu is a professor, a professor of law from the, and he's also the dean of the faculty of uh, law, University of Ibado. Thank you for coming, Thank sir. You, it was nice having you. And of course, uh, retired General Alabi Sama. Thank you very much. Uh, he is well a military administrator. Of course, he is responsible for. Ending the civil war, we should say, his tactics were responsible uh, for the reduction in, you know, uh, that war's tenure, as it were. We say he, he, put a he put a light to what the <laughs> person just said in his book. No, no, well, well yeah, say in, it. His <laughs> book. in his well, book. I, I okay. point, we, in his book. We, we, we haven't book. read the book. Well, well halfway. I was, I was, <laughs> it's a big book. Maybe we'll call pages. you, we'll we'll call you later book. to clarify. Yeah, I, I was, I was there and I, and I have the book. So these are the, 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 the men of... All the lies in uh, my command. Uh, yes. I corrected him. Oh, yeah. Well, well, we know that thank much. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank it was you. nice thank talking so to much. everybody yeah. on the set this morning. And we do hope uh, the Nigerian populace have picked up a thing or two. That's the idea. Regardless where we are today, I'll just say 58 years is a long time. And it's still a nation that's growing and uh, mm -hmm. developing. So let's do the needful as responsible citizens. Thank you for watching m 20 this morning. Well, for me, I believe we should enjoy this time. We should enjoy the celebration and also endeavor to contribute our own quarter towards the growth and development of this Adia nation, Nigeria. God bless you. Happy Independence Celebration.